So in this video, we're trying to solve this question here in which we have to apply the concept of resolution of forces to solve certain problems. The question here says, member BC exerts on member AC a force P directed along line BC. Knowing that P must have a 325 Newton horizontal component, determine A, the magnitude of the force P, B, its vertical component. So how do we solve this particular question? Your first task, as always, is to draw your free body diagram. All right, so let me draw my free body diagram just somewhere here. And now down do let's see what the diagram looks like for this. So let me try to draw AC. Um, AC is up. So if I look at this, if I said that AC, it mentioned AC in the question. AC is just this way. All right, this is A. This is A. This is C. All right, so I'll just draw um, a horizontal line upwards. So here, somewhere upwards, I'll just take um, this part here. Just draw this. Okay. All right, where does A start? At the hinge. Look at C. All right, so I'll just take somewhere around here. Let me take it as the hinge. I'll call this A. Um, B is another hinge below this. So I'll just take this point here. Below this, I'll call this B. Then call this point here, I'll call this C. All right, so there's a line connecting B and C, which is uh, this line here. All right, so I have this. Okay, so in this question, you mentioned a force, all right, a force P directed along line BC. Now, when you have a force P directed along line BC, what does that mean? Or how do you do that? That means we'll, we'll take line BC here, and this line here, you have a force, and the force will go this way. That's from C from B to C, like this. We'll call the force there P. That's how you solve the question, okay? So when they say line B C, it means it starts from B and moves towards C. That's your that's your force P. So that's it, all right? It starts from B and moves towards C, and that's it. So that's how we got the P there. Next up, let me try to get something like this. So let's see something here. Just to show your x-axis. Okay. They said. Okay, what again are we given? We are given the height there from B to C. We're given the height as 720 millimeters. Okay, so it means the height from this point here, this up to this point here, this about 720 millimeters. We have to convert that to meters. Okay, convert it to meters. Well, it's not very compulsory since you'll be taking co cosine and sine, they will cancel out. So it's not very compulsory, but then let's convert to meters. So let's convert 720 millimeters to meters. You divide by 1000, and that gives you 0 0.72 meters. That's the first one there. Also, you have the components from B to C. The horizontal components are 650. That's from B to C. That's from this part here, from B, this part up to C, which is, let's say, from here. I'm sketching this this way. All right, so just get where we are taking from. Um, I'll just put this this way. Okay, the value here, as we have, it's about um, 650 millimeters, which if you convert to meters, divide by 1000, that gives you 0 0.65 in meters. Okay, so basically we are forming a triangle here again. Okay, we're forming a triangle where the triangle would look like this. We have this part here. You have this part here, and you have, excuse me, you have this part here, and you have this here, where this is your 0 0.72 in meters, this is your 0 0.65 in meters, and this is where P is running. You have P here, that's where it's running. So that's that's where your P will be. So we have this. Okay, um, let's use Sokatua to find the value of the hypotenuse. All right, let's use Sokatua. To find the value of the hypotenuse. All right, so let's use Pythagoras theorem to find the value of the value of the hypotenuse. All right, using hype using the so, all right, so let's use the Pythagoras theorem to find the value of the hypotenuse. If we call this x, let's get this value of this this height here. If we call this x from Pythagoras theorem, x squared is equal to zero point seven two squared plus that's plus 0 0.65 squared. That's from Pythagoras theorem. Okay. Such that x 
will simply be equal to the square root of 0 0.72 squared plus 0 0.65 squared. So x will be equal to um, 0 0.72 squared plus 0 0.65 squared. And what you have there is 0 0.97, of course, in meters. So I will have x as 0 0.97. That's your value there. So I'll come here, take it off, and put 0 0.97 in meters. All right, so let's call this theta here. All right, so we've gotten this. So what's the next thing there? If you look at the question again, it said, knowing that P must have a horizontal component, um, the horizontal component of P, for P, let's call it PX. PX means horizontal component of P is equal to P cos theta. All right? And that's equal to P, what's cos theta here? From this diagram here, cosine, if you use soka toa, so, ka, toa, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Considering this angle, this is the opposite of it, that's O, opposite. The adjacent is A, that's 0 0.65, and the hypotenuse is this. So let's take, um, for cos, adjacent of a hypotenuse that becomes this one here 0 0.65 so cos that becomes 0 0.65 adjacent all over hypotenuse is this one here 0 0.97 so all over 0 0.97 all right this is the value of px that's your horizontal component in the question they said that the knowing that the horizontal component must okay the, the p must have a 325 newton that means the, the value of the horizontal component is three to five newton so this one here is equal to three to five all right let's now solve this so p into let's divide this 0 0.65 all over 0 0.97 that gives you about approximately 0 0.67 this is equal to three to five so p then is equal to to get the value of p you have to divide both sides so it becomes three two five divided by zero point six seven so p is now equal to three two five all over zero point six seven that's about four eight five point zero seven newton so hence this is the value of p as requested okay 45.07 newton which is what we asked to find that's the magnitude of the force p we've gotten that that's the a part b part said we should get the vertical component so this is for a i'll just come here and call this a for a b says get the vertical component so b vertical component vertical components for vertical components what do we have there we have that f um, P is in P now. So PY is equal to P sine of theta. Right? P sine theta. How do you get P sine theta? P sine theta is simply equal to, for this one here, we said sine from, if you use the so concept, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite is 0 0.72. The hypotenuse is 0 0.97. So it becomes 0 0.72 all over 0 0.97. This is the value of sine theta. Okay. 0 0.72 over 0 0.97. That's P into 0 0.72 all over 0 0.97. That's the value of sine theta. Let's now get the value of P. P we said is 485.07. That's 485.07. 0.07 we have this okay let's take this off 485.07 0 0.72 over 0 0.97 okay so from here py the vertical component is simply equal to 485.07 all into 0 0.72 all over 0 0.97 all right so what i have is about 360.05 in Newton. All right. So basically, this is how we solve this question.
question. All right, so that this becomes the um, vertical component. All right. All right, guys, if you enjoyed videos like this and you want more classes on applied mechanics or solid mechanics, simply visit my website, www.jonahimano.com forward slash courses and check the second year undergraduate one course. All right, so you can get it and it give you access to my other classes on applied mechanics or you can simply join my channel membership, all right? So click on the link in the video description, all right? And you join my channel, my channel membership. Look out for the second year undergraduate channel membership, all right? All right, guys, so that's how to get access to other courses like this, all right? So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to like this video. Leave a comment, all right? Leave a comment. Tell us if you enjoyed this video. If you have any other, or any other observation, leave it in the comment section. Any questions, leave it in the comment section and I'll attend to them. Don't forget to also subscribe to this channel. If it's your first time here or you're yet to subscribe, please hit the subscribe button and of course hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we upload a new content. And then lastly, share this video to your friends so that they can also learn. Thank you for your continuous support and see you in our next class.